So here we're going to take a look at how to use Excel to determine our descriptive statistics. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up our data set. Again, this one here is our quantitative data set. It's just expanded upon from the one we were utilizing last week. So again, we have, again, there's going to be a big bit of information. We have a sample of heights in centimeters. And altogether, we have 30 observations listing there. And we're going to want to do a few things to this. We're going to want to do our kind of typical set of descriptive statistics. We're going to want to order the data. We're going to be interested in, hey, what's our minimum value, our maximum value? What are the quartiles, first, second, third? We're then going to want to figure out what the mean is, what our standard deviation is. And then we might finish off creating a histogram again, just to wrap things up with our previous section. So the first thing that I want to look at doing is ordering my data set. So what we want to do is we want to select our data set all the way down there. And then to order it quite easy up to the top right here, sort and filter. And we're just going to go filter. We have a little drop down arrow now on our variable on our heading. We're just going to go smallest to largest. And there we go. We now have our data set sorted from smallest to largest. If we want to get rid of that, we can just select it again and go click on our filter and it disappears that little drop arrow. Working on this, what we're going to try, what we're going to want to determine is our minimum value, our maximum value, Q1, Q2, keep in mind that's our median. We're going to want Q3, so first, second, third quartile. I then want to find my mean. Keep in mind, right, I'm just going to put this here because, okay, we have a sample height, so I'm just going to write X bar just so that I know. A, I'm dealing with sample. And then I want to figure out, well, let's go my variance. And again, that's going to be S squared as sample. And my standard deviation. And that's just going to be S, again, S, not sigma, because I'm dealing with a sample. We'll ultimately want to create a histogram as well. So we're going to want to use our rule of 2 to the K. So let's put that down. And we're going to need to work out our bin widths as well. So we kind of have our little working thing of all the bits we need to figure out. Now what we're going to be looking at here in Excel is how we can utilize Excel to get this done a lot quicker than doing everything by hand. This is also a good tool for you to use if you are trying to work through this by hand and you want to double check your equations. So first, these are all things I'm going to put up. I'm just going to bold it so that I know these are titles. First thing I want to consider is my minimum value. So in order to get my minimum value, I can just tell Excel, hey, I want the minimum. That's just going to be equals minimum, right? And as soon as I start typing it, it starts to say, hey, is this what you're looking for? There's min, yep, I can hit tab to start the open parenthesis. And I'm just going to select my data set. So from A2 all the way through to A31, close parenthesis, and it tells me my minimum value is 120. Given that I've already ordered my data set, that's good. I could have picked that out just by looking, but we can use this function just the same if, say, we didn't order it first. You can do the same thing, equals max, hit tab to get it to input, and then select our data set. Again, that's going to come back as 240. I can tell that because we have it ordered. For quartiles, quartiles, similarly, we can figure this, these out quite easily. Right? Normally, we'd have to go location formula, figure out where the location is. Then based off of that location, we'd have to go and find out, okay, what's the actual value attached to that location, et cetera, et cetera. Not in Excel. It's a bit easier. We can use this quartile.exc. That's for the exclusive. And it wants our array, right? So, okay, I started typing. It had the one that I wanted. I hit tab. So, boom, it pops up. Open parenthesis saying, okay, which array do you want to use? I want to use this array, comma, and I want to use my 1 for my 25th percentile or my first quartile. And it's going to say, hey, your first quartile is 157.5. We can also find it using percentiles, right? So again, quartile, very specific. First quartile, that's the 25th percentile. I can also do percentile. 
exclusive. Again, select my array. And this time here, I'd put in that it's my 25th percentile. Oh, it's not liking that. So if it's not liking that, let's go back. Let's see what's wrong. You can click on this little FX part here, and we'll open this up, and we'll tell you what exactly it's looking at. So here we go. We put in a value of 25 for K. What is it saying? K is returns the kth percentile of values in a range. Okay is the percentile value that's between zero and one. So that is we don't want to put in 25, we want to put in 0 0.25. And if we hit okay there, we get sure enough the same result, right? So that there is to show you, you'll commonly have this. You'll start going through and you're like, oh, I think I know what I'm doing. And then, oh, why am I getting an error? Why do I have this hashtag number showing up or hashtag error? What you can always do is click on this f of x, it will open up your function box and you can kind of see what Excel actually wants for each function. We can, oh, this is the problem with Excel. If you're selecting in the box and you select on another cell, it tries to overwrite. Let's just get rid of that. I'm just hitting Control Z. Nope. Erase it. There we go. So carrying on with my quartiles. My second quartile, same array. This time here, I want my second quartile. So that's going to be my median, right, the middle value. And then finally, my third quartile. Same array. And this time here, quartile three. So again, keeping in mind what these quartiles mean. Third quartile, 75th percentile, means that 75% of our heights are smaller than 193.75. If 73 or sorry, if 75 percent of our heights are smaller than that, well, then 25 percent of the students weigh, or sorry, are taller than that, right? We could say do something funny as well. We could say, hey, what is say some height such that 70 percent are shorter? Well, if I want to know some height such that 70 percent are shorter, well, that's going to be my 70th percentile. So. Percentile exclusive, hit tab. I want my array and I want to have the 0.7, the 70th percentile. And I say, okay, look, 70% of students are shorter than 181 centimeters. Alternatively, I could phrase that another way 30% of students are going to be taller than 181 centimeters. So we can use percentiles to kind of answer those kind of questions. Let's just delete that, keep with our initial kind of uh, line of questions here. What's our value of the mean, right? So keep in mind, this is X bar, our sample mean. We have up in the top left, we're dealing with sample heights. So our mean is gonna be, you gotta keep in mind, okay, we typically refer to this as the mean. Excel is saying, okay, it's not the mean, it's the average. And there we go, it says average, arithmetic mean, it says that in the brackets right over there. So hit tab to open that up. And again, we just select our vector. With that selected, it computes it and we get our mean of 173 point, right? It goes on and on and on. Say this happens and you have a whole bunch of decimal points being put, but you only want Excel to kind of say, give you two decimal places. You can select your columns of interest or just your individual cell of interest and hit right click. From here, we can go to format cells and we can go, what category do we want? We want this to be a number and we want it rounded to two decimal places. If we hit okay, Excel will automatically round it all to two decimal places. So same kind of idea, format cells, number, two decimal places, and everything, right? Even 120 that was happy just being 120 is now 120.00. Okay, so we figure out our variance. So again, to find our variance, we're gonna start off by putting in equals, and then our code for variance is just variance. Now you'll notice that we have var, and we have var p and var s. All right, you're like, uh oh, what's that? Well, if you start looking at that little text that pops up, we see that var p calculates the variance based on the entire population, right? So okay, keep in mind our whole formula as to what's going on here. This is sigma squared, sigma squared, 
That's the summation of square deviations over capital N. What are we dealing with? We're dealing with a sample, so we want S squared, summation of squared deviations all over N minus one. So in this case here, we don't want var dot P, we want var dot S. So you can either use the down arrow to highlight it and then hit tab, or you can click it with your mouse and hit tab. From here, we're just gonna select our array, the vector that we have there underneath sample heights, close the parenthesis and hit enter. And we have our variance. From here, standard deviation, two ways we can go about through this. We could just say, okay, we know the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so we can go SQRT for square root, and say square root of that cell there to give us 3404. We could also use the standard deviation built-in function. So again, equals and start typing STD. And again, we have STD F, so standard deviation P and standard deviation S. Well, again, P for population, S for sample. We want the sample. Oh, sorry. See, if you hit enter, it's just going to go, what's going on? No, we want the standard deviation S. Hit tab to bring that up. And then we select our vector, close the parenthesis, and now we can hit enter. Oh, good. We got the same result from both, right? Did the right thing. So there we have our whole bunch of descriptive statistics very quickly done for us. We can get those results, double check our work if we're doing it by hand. Our last thing that we want to do, figure out what our rule of 2 to the k is and our number of bin widths. So keep in mind, rule of 2 to the k. We want this value of 2 to the k to be just bigger than our sample size. So let's play around with a few values. Let's play around with a value of k of 3, 4, 5, and 6. So these are possible values of k, and I'm just going to go equals 2 to the power of, I'm just going to go up and select this 3. So okay, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. If I then take this and select and drag it to the right, as I select and drag it to the right, it's going to update that cell reference to the one above. So instead of 2 to the power of 3, I'm now 2 to the power of 4. I'm now 2 to the power of 5 on and on and on. What did I have all together? I had 30 observations, so 32 is just bigger, meaning that in this case here, k of 5 is what I'd be looking for. So what happens though if you have a huge data set, right, in this case here we can just quickly look at it and say okay, 31 minus 1 for the heading means 30 observations. We can figure out our sample size that's going to be n, we can figure that another way too. We can use the built-in function equals count and tab to make that actually pop up. Select all of our values there, close parenthesis, enter, and it's saying, okay, there's 30 observations. We counted 30 cells with numbers in them. So another way we can use a function to get that. But back to our rule of 2 to the k, we are suggesting 5 bins. What about for our bin widths? Well, keep in mind our bin width, this here is our maximum value minus our minimum value divided by our number of bins. So our number of bins in this case here was five. So it's suggesting a bin width of 24. Uh, you know what? I kind of like to count by 25. That seems like a nice one to count by. So we're gonna suggest instead a bin width of 25. And I'm just going to highlight that just so that I know, okay, that's what I was calculated. This is what I'm actually going to utilize. Oh, we have one descriptive statistic here we didn't look at, and that was skewness. Now here you're going to be tempted to start going equals SQ, and you're going to be like, oh, here we go. Here's the skewness, and uh, this isn't going to actually be your value. Right, and in this case here, it's not going to be the value because this is not the same skewness as what we were using to calculate. If you keep in mind in the video, there was I mentioned there's lots of different ways to measure skewness. The base in Excel is not the one we're going to be using in this course. The one we were using in this course was three times, that is, we just have to do it by hand, three times our mean minus our median. So median is second quartile. 
So three times that difference divided by our standard deviation. So 34.0. In this case here, I work out my skewness and I find that yeah, I'm pretty close to zero. There's a slight positive skew, but that's not that's not too bad. So pretty, I'd expect this uh, distribution to be fairly symmetric. Really what I can take away from that is that when I actually go to create this histogram, I should expect it to be roughly right, depending on my bin size, it might not be perfect, but I would expect this to be roughly symmetric, kind of falling off evenly to both sides. So let's take a look at this histogram. Keep in mind to do that, we're gonna select this data set. We're gonna go up to insert, over to charts and hit this drop down. And it's gonna say recommended, no, no, let's go jump over to all charts down to histogram and put in our histogram. So, okay. We see with our histogram, oh, it defaulted to four bins, but we wanted five. So again, if we wanna fix that, we can just double click on the bottom here. We can go to, if it doesn't already go to it, you can go to axes options, so horizontal axes, click on this chart, axes options, and we can change our either bin width to 25 or our number of bins to five. Either one should give us about the same result. And we see, yeah, okay, it is roughly symmetric, but we do see that the tail does go slightly off to the right, meaning that we do have this slight positive skew. So our numbers were telling us about what it actually was happening. Put in our title, we have sample heights in centimeters, Okay, what else do we have here? We want to include in this our axes titles. So our horizontal axes, this was my x variable, which was heights in centimeters. And the vertical axes, what was this guy? This was frequency. Okay, so that's how we could use Excel to go through our descriptive statistics to visualize this data. If you have any questions in working through any of these parts, please feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, that does it for this uh, little Excel walkthrough.